So guys, if you want a better understanding of the muscles around the hip joint, this tutorial is for you. Let's use our 3D anatomy model to show you the key muscles of the hip. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So in this quick anatomy video, we're gonna guide you through the key muscles of the hip joint. And we're gonna add a little bit of clinical context to help you memorize some of those key muscles in practice. And we're gonna start with the hip flexor muscles. So there are four key muscles in this region. We have the psoas major muscle. We have the iliacus muscle. We have rectus femoris and we have sartorius. Now, a key way that we sometimes memorize these muscles is the phrase, play it like Ronaldo, Sue. And the idea here is that the P for play stands for psoas major, the I for it stands for iliacus, the R for Ronaldo stands for rectus femoris, and the S for Sue stands for sartorius. Now, one of the other key thought processes around these hip flexor muscles is that they often have secondary roles because a lot of them cross more than one joint. So, for example, we have psoas major, which, as we know, flexes the hip, but it actually originates at the lumbar spine, and it also therefore has a role in lumbar spine flexion. We have rectus femoris, which as well as acting on the hip, also crosses the knee joint as it inserts onto the tibial tuberosity. And of course, therefore, it's a key extensor of the knee as well as a hip flexor. And we have sartorius, and we can see how this muscle loops around the anterior thigh before looping around to the anteromedial knee. And therefore, we can also remember that this muscle has a role in knee flexion as well as hip flexion. So next, let's dive into the hip extensors. And let's start with what is probably the most famous and most memorable hip extensor, and that is the gluteus maximus muscle. So of course, when you're thinking about your hip thrust exercises, when you're thinking about your resisted cable hip extension, it's your glute max, which is one of the primary muscles that we're trying to strengthen. Then we have the hamstring muscles, which are semimembranosis, semitendinosis, and biceps femoris. Now, the key thing regarding the hamstrings muscles is that if we look back to semimembranosis, we can see that they all originate around the ischial tuberosity of the pelvis before inserting around the proximal tibia and the proximal fibula when it comes to biceps femoris. So this helps us remember that as well as a hip extensor, these muscles also flex the knee. Now, the other muscle, which is a primary hip extensor, is adductor magnus, which is often forgotten. However, if we line up this muscle from the side, where we can see that the femur is now in a neutral position almost, we can see that this muscle runs totally along the back of the femur before inserting into the distal femur posteriorly, therefore helping us remember that it is also a chief hip extensor. So next, let's explore the lateral rotators of the hip. And first of all, we're going to dive posteriorly at the hip to look at the superior and inferior gemelli muscles, also known as gemellus superior and gemellus inferior. We then have obturator internus, also on the posterior aspect of the hip. Notice how this muscle originates from the internal side of the obturator foramen. We also have quadratus femoris, and we also have piriformis. Now, if we run round the anterior surface of the hip, we can see obturator externus. We said a second ago that obturator internus originates from the internal side of the obturator foramen, and obturator externus originates from the external side of the obturator foramen. Now, if we look posteriorly, we can see all these muscles in their position. And the key one I want to highlight to you is the piriformis muscle. The reason being is that all of the others originate from the pelvis uh, bone of the ilium and ischium. And we can see here with superior gemellus, inferior gemellus, obturator internus and quadratus femoris how they do that. However, the piriformis muscle originates from the sacrum. And that's why sometimes we find that when patients have buttock pain, 
Instead of stretching these muscles, that simply kind of pulls the sacrum away from the femur, theoretically, and therefore strengthening to try and bring them together and stabilize the hip a bit more seems to be a more optimal play given the origin of the piriformis muscle from the sacrum to the femur. Next, we have the hip abductors. So the first one to mention is gluteus maximus. Now, interestingly, it is the superior part of this muscle which has a role in hip abduction. And often the glute max is not thought of as an abductor, but it's important for us to acknowledge that it has some role in this movement. However, if we remove glute max, the other three muscles here are chiefly thought of as the hip abductors. And also they have a significant role in hip internal rotation too. So first of all, let's look at the gluteus minimus muscle. Notice how this muscle inserts around the gray tr trochanter of the femur. Next, sitting over the top of it, slightly bigger than gluteus minimus, is gluteus medius. Once again, we can see that this muscle inserts into the greater trochanter of the femur. And then the third muscle to mention is the tensor fasciolata. Now, this muscle inserts or joins into the iliotibial band of the thigh, which goes on to insert towards the lateral knee. And some people suggest that we can describe the iliotibial band as a continuation of the tensor fasciolata muscle. But of course, it's crucially important to remember that the ITB is not a muscle itself, but rather it's a thick connective tissue. So coming back to all of these muscles together. One of the key things I wanted to point out to you is the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus muscles. And as we said, they insert into the superior facet of the great trochanter of the femur. When we think of patients who have a gluteal tendinopathy, where they have pain around the lateral hip, it's thought that it's a tendinopathy of these two insertions in particular, whereby they can get compressed by the iliotibial band over the top of them when the hip is significantly adducted, which can lead to pain, which leads to a gluteal tendinopathy. And then finally, let's talk through the hip adductor muscles. Here we have, starting from the top and working our way down, pectineus. We then have adductor brevis. We then have adductor longus. We have the gracilis muscle. And if we move round to the back, we have the biggest of them, adductor magnus. Now, if we put all of these on the screen, the key thing to mention, and I'm sure you've heard this before, is the memory aid, three ducks pecking grass. This helps us remember the key muscles that adduct the hip. The three ducks are the adductor longus, adductor brevis, and adductor magnus muscles. Pecking stands for pectineus, and grass is where we can remember gracilis. So there you go, the hip adductors, three ducks pecking grass. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial guiding you through the key muscles of the hip. If you want more, make sure to keep an eye on our Instagram channel at Clinical Physio and on our website clinicalphysio.com as we give you loads more anatomy with our anatomy bootcamp courses. These are going to be absolutely superb for your anatomy where we go through all of the key anatomy around certain joints in all the detail you need. But for now, my name's Khalid. Thank you so much for joining us. See you soon here on Clinical Physio. Yeah.